Hello everyone! Are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another Jelly Lost video, because today, as we can clearly see here, the Digest will be streamed on YouTube, and based on this, it will be here in 20 or so hours. So before then, I figured, let's look back at the second year anniversary, kind of look at what they did, and kind of try and figure out what exactly we ex I expect to see for the third year anniversary. So that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, you can leave a like. You can comment down below. Tell me what you kind of want out of the third year anniversary. Um, what you're expecting. What you're hoping. What is a long shot. What is a thing you think is 100% sure. Whatever you want to say. Um, feel free to leave it down there. And you can subscribe to me if you want some more general game. Uh, general me. <laughs> I guess is the best way of saying it. I play more than Dragalia, but... Uh, I've been saving a very long time for Dragalia. You do have no idea how hard it's been, dude. After uh, after they dropped Gala Volk, and then they immediately dropped the girl who was amazing with Gala Volk, and I had to just stop because I was like, no, this is how they get me. I I was very lucky to get him and not a lot of uh, tickets, so I was like, okay, I just need to cut my losses now and wait for the actual anniversary. So. First things first, I think it's something that kind of bears in mind to be kind of mentioned. Um, I don't know how much it's going to affect them. Now, obviously, when this anniversary was rolling around, uh, I think people have forgotten about it just because it happened such a long time ago. But it had been around the time the pandemic had hit. Uh, the start of the pandemic, it's... The... Yeah, it's been a long-ass time. But I'm saying this now because back then, they were going all hands on like this is crazy we're not going to stop for nothing and we're going to keep on moving forward and they've been doing that the entire time during the pandemic not really slowing down when they really probably should have and that kind of shows in what they had planned here for the anniversary um i think we might actually see some less stuff from them this year i think that's probably possible um but hey we'll see uh, but that's something I think you should be bared in mind when you're thinking about it. It's like, I think, and especially with what they kind of said, even though in the news bracket they said we're going to be slowing down events, they gave a specific date and it's actually going to be a while until that kind of starts happening. So who knows, maybe this is going to be very fast and then afterwards they're like, well, this is the part where we, around this part we realized that was unattainable and that's why we stopped right here. But up until this point, you're going to have plenty of stuff, so... Anyway, the second year anniversary had Game Rebalance and they had the Alberian Battle Royale. I guess let's start with the Alberian Battle Royale. So they added in a Battle Royale mode. Um, I don't know if they're going to touch the Alberian Battle Royale mode, to be honest. Uh, I don't know what else they could do to it. They kinda, It's kind of just exists on its own. And the people who don't play it automatically die in it or throw the game. And the people who want to play it are still playing it. So... I don't know if that's going to change, really. The one thing I am curious is if they're going to introduce another new way to play the game. Um, I kind of doubt it, based off of some of the words they've used, and they're going to focus more on the actual gameplay stuff of Dragalia. But you never know. I don't really see them changing anything about the Alberian Battle Royale, though. So, I don't know if, how many people remember when the game rebalances. So let's start first. It was Weapon and Crafting Reworks. Uh, stuff used to work way different back in a year, so let's just specifically say what they uh, changes they made for this. The crafting assets tabs have been removed and replaced by weapons crafting tabs for which players can select, craft, and upgrade a weapon for various groups. A new feature called the weapon bonus has been added. Uh, certain weapon abilities will apply to all weapons. The way players use and upgrade weapons has changed uh, other ways as well. Uh, this was pretty big because basically back in the day, each weapon used to be its own individual slot and you'd have to go back and constantly sell stuff that was useless. It used to work very different um, than how it works now where you have one kind of weapon and then you just kind of buy into it and it doesn't really take up any space. I think the current system we have now is good with some faults in it that I think could still be used in improvements. I don't think it needs a full rework, but if they want to make it a little better, I would be here for it. Uh, but let me tell you right now, that when they introduced this, oh my god, so many people were saying, I'm quitting Dragalia, this is the straw that broke the camel's back. When I thought that the, this rework was always needed and was bad, the only thing that was kind of, I thought they handled poorly, is that it actually hurt a lot of people that were 
it helped people like me who had all their stuff ready and on the side, but for a lot of other people who didn't really have it, like they played a very different style of game to me who didn't really save everything, it kind of screwed them over and that's kind of where I'm going with the worm prints as well. Because a lot of people used to only keep one copy. I was one of the very few people who always kept four copies of absolutely everything that I needed just in case. Um, and so when the reworks happened, I was one of the very few people who was so crazy built for it, where they were like, who plays like this? And I was like, I played like this, and this is awesome. This is exactly what I wanted. But it ended up hurting a lot of people, and I think Worm Prince might need another rework of some kind. I don't know how. I'm going to say right now, I think what they'll do is they'll add more. At this point, I think every single Worm Print should be under one of the bonuses, because there's still a lot of, um... Uh, worm prints that don't give a bonus to the overarching thing like the if you use four of these you get dragon bonus stuff or you use two of these you're immune to this and such and so forth i think that kind of needs to be improved and i think it's a real shame that they haven't gone back and you know made a lot of those better for whatever reason so i think the third anniversary would be a good time not a complete rework they just need to update some of them basically is what i want um, this rework was also a pain in the butt with Worm Prince because it was basically like the Avengers, uh, not the, the, when the Thanos snapped his fingers and it was like, all right, so which one of the two abilities survived? Was it one of the good ones? Oh God, thank God. Uh, back in the day, Chocolatiers, for example, used to give 50% charge and 50% charge. So it used to give just 100% skill charge uh, at the beginning, and then post buff it only gave 50. So that was one of the ones that got hugely hurt when the snap happened and it affected a lot of worm prints. But anyway, I think they could still use something with uh, uh, improving some worm prints, but not a full rework, at least that's what I'm thinking in my head. Changes to the summoning system, this is when they added worm sig signals and stuff like that, and I think in the first year, or around this time, is when they introduced the new way of summoning where they dropped the price of a multi and they made it better. Here's where I think a lot of my specific things are going into, so here's my specific problem with um, the summoning system as it is now. I think, and I've had to think about it for a while, because I do think that a lot of people make a good point. The main thing, my main problem here is that I think summoning in Dragalia currently sucks. Um, it's hell. It's actively hell, and it's not as bad as when it used to be, when Worm Prince used to be in banners. Um, but I think it's almost getting there. I think it's almost getting there with how bad it is, if they don't make some changes to it. And I think it's time for them to make some smart changes. One big change I'm going to say right now, I think dupe adventurers should add to pity. If you get a dupe adventurer, that should count as either you have another... Um, instead of 300, that's 10 whole points if you get a dupe, um, 5 star. Because I think that's the worst thing, is that if you get a dupe 5 star, it can feel like your entire, s the wind out of your sails just gets completely blown out of you. And there's just no value in a dupe adventure. The best you can say is water. And for a player like me, and maybe it's, the, maybe that shows the difference between a player like me and players who are more into the game. The water they give me is useless. I have plenty of water for the specific units that I use and what I want. I never have run out of water one time playing this game. And like I said with the worm print changes, when everyone was saying, oh my god, I need water because I never fully unbounded all of my worm prints just in case. I did. I don't need, all my movements are basically done. They were already done by the time the rework happened. So the idea of them giving still the same amount of water that they've been given since year zero of the game, I think is unacceptable. At least based off of specifically the improved Mr. Galia has done. It's a little different with some gotchas who never change. But I think for Dragalia, I think this change, something should change in that. And it should be something related to dupe adventures. Because I think right now they need to give something better than what they have right now. And I think giving, uh, helping making the, <laughs> making the five adventurers count towards pity and increasing that will help out a little bit. Uh, it will help definitely lessen the blow at points. Uh, there will still be plenty of multis where I only get like two adventurers at best and then I get a pity, which has happened to me exactly once. And boy, let me tell you, that sucked. Um, but yeah. Um, that's at least my current thoughts and feelings about this. So, I also wouldn't mind it if they changed it to a thousand more might is one multi now. I think that would also be fine. If you don't want to change that, I think that would also help kind of lessen... It would be a whole... It would save you like, what? 
Well, let me actually check on this. Let me look at the... Let me pull up the old calculator. Because I'm pretty sure if it costs this many and you times it by 30, 3,000... Uh, uh, 3, you'd basically save... Let me see. 6,000 divided by... You'd save around five multis for going for pity, which isn't bad. It's not the worst thing in the world, I think. I don't know. But I think there should be some changes towards this. Or if anything, at least update the fucking five-star ticket. Come on. <laughs> that thing is is not good anymore. It hasn't been good for <laughs> three years. So I think it can kind of use a little bit of balance. Adventure and Dragon Balance. We've already seen them kind of hint going for a Dragon Balance with the... Uh, new system that's going to be coming with the update. We don't know how. I think it's actually pretty smart the way they've done it here where they're like some dragons are getting it right now because I think they realize the second anniversary. If you were not there for the second anniversary when you were an old player there was so much complaining. So much complaining over their handling of it and I think it's very fair that maybe they shouldn't have dropped a metric fuck ton of things. So let me see. They're going to start giving this which I think is fair. Perfectly fair. Um, so there's some dragon balances coming. I think they could use an adventure balance, but I don't know if they're going to do it like they did here. So if you weren't here when they did this, absolutely every single adventurer got a balance and got a tweak of some kind. Almost everyone got buffed. Some people got nerfed. Um, for example, I've, uh, Vice, I think, the Shadow 3, he got nerfed, uh, because he was too good for, he was too good for what they wanted. So they kind of nerfed him a little bit, which I thought was fair, considering every, absolutely everyone else got buffed. Um, now because of Curse and Nihility, I don't think that, um, I don't know if this is going to change anything. I think they might change Curse of Nihility, and I think that what ends up happening is Adventures aren't going to get a rework, because I think the rework towards Adventures is Curse of Nihility. Um, uh, I'm someone who thinks that under certain circumstances and certain fights, uh, Curse of Nihility is perfectly fine. I don't think it should be used for endgame content, though. I don't think it should be used for some of the ender bosses just because they think that certain adventurers completely solo them. If you feel that's, if you feel certain adventurers because the way they built are so negative towards the experience, my suggestion would be ban those characters outright from this specific stage if you feel that way. But it's a single player game. I think banning would be silly. But if they really felt that strongly about it, I guess I would be fine with it. If it meant that people would be good once again. Um, some other I think they could balance, actually. I think they could balance a lot of the... Um, the... Which I was going to call them the spirals, but I was going to call them the... The Mighty dudes. But they're not all from the Mighties. From Trials of the Mighty. Uh, spirals, some older spirals probably now, and to be honest, some of the newer spirals have not been that great. So I could see some of them getting adjusted to make them a little bit better. But again, I don't know if they're going to go as crazy as they did when they announced this. Because this was insane. Absolutely every adventurer, and then they did not tell us what any of the changes were. It was absolute chaos, so I don't know if they're going to do it again. Um, adjustments to solo and co-op rewards. They already kind of announced something like that was going to happen and go down, so... That's good. Um, let me see. There was changes to endeavors, conditions to unlocking quests. They removed the mentor bonus. So, so this is actually good. And they added a new weapon type, mana casters. So this is a good time to mention. Are they going to remove anything and kind of start moving them into something new? I don't know, to be honest. I think that... Hmm, I have a feeling that they might try and remove... You know the the current system we get where we open the encyclopedia and we can play any event? I think they might start looking into getting rid of that and maybe compensating for it. Uh, the reason I think that is because I think they the way that they are switching their models, I think what they want is those old events back so that people can grind them again and they can kind of be reused over and over and over again. So I could see them totally being like, listen, we're removing this from you. So we can put them back in rotation. Because of the removal, we're adding a thing that lets you experience story stuff whenever you want. And also here's like... Uh, 
mm, 5,000 Wormite, let's call it, because you're going to be losing a lot. 5,000 Wormite and 5 multi-tickets, because we are actually losing a lot from that, I guess, if you had not done it before. Uh, something like that. I could see them maybe doing something like that, but hey, let's wait and see on that one. Um, do I think they might add a new weapon type? I think the answer is they might add multiple weapon types because of this change right here. They're adding it so, if you can see here, you're, you're going to get more drop rates from stuff. You would only do this if you are about to drop more weapons that need to be grinded. So here's my thing. I think that they might introduce three new weapons. And these three new weapons, I don't know how they're going to do it. Uh, because currently, Mana Casters are the biggest pain in the asses. And to be honest, Mana Casters are, in essence, three classes in one already, which makes them equally annoying that not every single class has them. And all of mostly all of them are five stars. I think they should look back into maybe giving us some four stars again, four and three stars again. That'd be nice. Besides just Sharpshooter Joe. I think it'd actually be funny if they gave Sharpshooter Joe some kind of spiral. A Trial of the Mighty related to the anniversary or something. Uh, actually, here's another thing that I don't think it's going to have available to me, but I think a rework, I think a rework of Trials of the Mighty and or Mana Spirals in general might be coming as well, especially with the new item that's coming in. I think it's likely that something will change, uh, but we'll wait and see about that. Uh, let me see. Anything to, I think, I don't know if there's anything else I can really think of. Oh, we'll get a new mini, of course. Hmm, the following formerly limited will now be non-limited. I think they might do that again. I think that's very likely. Hmm. And yeah, and obviously they're going to show us... Oh yeah, here's the Galadrigalia, the... A summon showcase with all of them on it. We'll probably get something similar to this, but... Maybe divided into some banners. And same goes for the Platinum Showcase stuff. Um, I won't discuss what unit I think will be likely for the Galadrigalia because people should be caught up in story, so I'm not going to say anything there. If you made it this far and have not mentioned it in the comments, I thank you. If not, then uh, maybe avoid the comments. Um, I think they might announce a collab. I think that's something that might happen here now that I'm looking. Obviously, daily free tenfold will happen. We'll get, we'll get a buttload. If you are someone coming in from Genshin, don't worry. We get a lot of free multis. I don't even bring it up because it's like, yeah, no shit, we're going to get a lot of free multis. That's actually the fun thing about playing side games is that you don't never have to worry about um, your game getting a lot of multis because that's all we really do. We may ha make you grind forever, but at least you get a lot of multis to summon to it. Um, that's something for sure. Uh, let me see, anything else I want to kind of talk about first? No, I think that's basically it. I'm going to go in there. They're going to obviously reveal some characters. I think a collab might be coming. They might reveal some stuff for the Halloween. I think that's also possible for them to show off maybe one of the units or something. Hmm. But yeah, that's basically it. I, uh, that's it for this video, because at this point now, if I go on, I could go on about what I would specifically want. In terms of changes, I don't know if there's a lot of changes they need to do besides maybe... Obviously, we're going to get a new difficulty thing that goes above beyond... I think, well, actually, I don't know if we are going to. We might get a new set because there's so many elemental stuff we can kind of work with, but, you know, for now, I just wanted to make this video before the actual stuff gets in to see how much of what I think is coming is actually right. Uh, thank you very much for listening to this video. <laughs> listening to this video. I'll see you guys whenever the digest drops down. I'll make sure to recap what I think is coming and stuff like that. And that's the end of today's video. Goodbye, everyone. And happy almost third anniversary. Let's go.